Good morning, everybody. Welcome, welcome. We're here. How's Early it going? CEO 2018. I'm doing all right. And yourself, man? Oh, yeah. I'm bright eyed and bushy tailed here there in the morning. Go. Ready for some Lunder Night action there. That's what's up. We're here at CEO, like I said, 2018 in beautiful Daytona Beach. Yep. So, Some I know the shining weather is sweet. Yep. I just went outside and it felt like a normal day, <laughs> like in Houston, like midday. So, that's what's up. Awesome. That's how it goes, right? So. Hope you all enjoy tuning in. We're getting our early matches up. So the first block of pools will be the G pools. Everyone's set up here for some undernight and birth. It's going to be a lot of fun too, which we'll have undernight all day through. So starting at 10 a.m., it's going to go all the way to top eight through the middle of the day. So hope everyone's tuning in, watching. You know, shout it out, tweet it out. We're here at twitch.tv slash villain904. All right, going right into the first match though. So. Aurier and Wagner. It's like, like off the bat. We got like the anime, the anime wives going at it. The Violent Repent with Orie, Deadly Rain X with Wagner. So both fighters wasting no time to get to know each other here. Yep, speak with your fists or your shields. So what can you tell me like a little bit with like between the two, like a matchup? What do you say? Just like what is there? What are they trying to accomplish outside of you know winning? Obviously. Well, uh, Wagner is going to be trying to charge up that shield and that sword. And get to some shenanigans there. There we see the uh, shield bash. So we're definitely going to see that. Trying to see a lot of pressure here. Usually I see from Wagner players. And Borea is going to work with that range. So it's like a little bit of normals to contest. And nice. There's the first DP going into it. Not putting anything to chance. Oh, but. Mashes against the mix-up. Oh, but checks her right to the EX. So you see, like, Orie really wants to get, like, a knockdown to set up, like, a nice little meaty. She has her, her special, which brings out her you know, her stand, her persona, whatever you want to call it. It's going to come out and set up a little field that she can kind of play behind. Oh, oh the Deadly Rain X not giving him a chance. Ooh, change it. Yeah, the GERD is available, so... You know, it's a game where both players have that bar on the bottom where they can kind of play back and forth. Whoever has it shining can cancel anything they do pretty much on block. Or even some whiff things and continue their turn. That's going to play a big part into a lot of the neutral game and a lot of decision making. As we've got the first first game going to Deadly Rain X. A little was pressure there from uh, Deadly Rain X in that matchup. Yeah, just unrelenting. Not letting, even though Ori had the range, just contesting right into it and just challenging uh, Serpent to really like control that kind of space and say like, hey, you're gonna keep me out here or not? You just let me through. Yeah, I'm gonna let whatever happen. You kind of saw that. I'm gonna stay in your face and then we see it again. Once again, Deadly Rain just rushing right in, getting final repent into the corner. No bar is coming. Quite the grid advantage right now. It's gonna go Vorpal. Yeah, it has this. Oh, but a really. Kind of this time jump went for the mix-up, got blocked. Now you see some extra pressure here. As finally Valiant Repent gets us up to the combo. And there you're gonna see. Went for some the damage ender. Oh, but challenge is up to the overhead. There's the break on the GERD. Decided to try to shield, but unfortunately, guess wrong on the low block. But still fighting it out. 
Gonna be having plenty of bar to work with. Who's to use some of it? Gets hit for his troubles. That was a grip of damage too. That big trade worked all the way in Repent's favor, and finally put around the board. It looks like he's waking up a little bit, just like everybody else here. Uh, as this is the first match of the day. So you build that energy as the morning progresses. Yep. Okay, there's that shield bash and counter hit. Nice little extension here. There's the bar. Sets up the mix-up. Doesn't tech forward. Tech try back into Wagner, but challenges on landing. So Deli Repet trying to fight back here, but no, Ooh, a good break. break. Yes. Ooh, sit down. Oh, that's like one of my little favorite things about the game is just like there's like animations for certain kind of hits. So you see the ones that just like sit the opponent down, put their butts on the floor, just like, oh, take a second. Oh my god, the challenges. No fear. Shield rush in, yeah. Yeah, just like all the little gaps is just not uh, not respecting any of the pressure and always challenging the overheads. Both players really just not letting each other have that break there, but there you see it. Good defense against the assault. Catches final repent coming in and once again pushed into the corner here. Alright, there you go. Nice shields. Builds up a good amount of gear, but the shield bash. We tech throw. Set up the big EX yeah, the and goes up. low. There we go. Speaking of Deadly Rain sitting on a lot of meter right now. I wonder what he's saving it for. Okay. Goes for another wake up uppercut. Ooh, there's a shield bash, but not in the corner, so not really gonna get that combo extension here. Change it. Oh, try to assault. Maybe tech out a throw, but... Oh, we back defense. That. Nice patience there from Violent Repent, but still Deadly Rain taking it in the end with a poke. Two out of three. Nice, respectable handshake both players as he wins the set. 2-0. It's just a shrug. Like, ah, shrug. I tried. Like, I mean, it was good on him. Like, he avoided that shield at the end. Yeah. So he had a chance to, like, to have his turn, but Deadly Rain X just continuing to pressure and play, even though he might not have had the advantage there, but it kind of caught Deadly Repent off, off guard. Yeah, he definitely had a little bit of trouble getting his offense going early on and started to try to get it going a little bit later in the match, but just wasn't able to put it together the way he would have liked to, and that sends him into loser's bracket. Yeah, that's always kind of the worst thing, or first off, is that going into there, right there, and that's like, a, it's a wake up call, so it is something that you gotta gotta think about, because now you're already in there, and it's just, it just started. So you have to do the longest run of anybody yeah. is when you lose first round to go through all that, which that's how it goes, right? It's a little bit tough to deal with, but some guys pull it off. We'll oh, see yeah. if Final Repent can do that today. So, and we have a pretty sack tournament this weekend here for Undernight. Over 100 ent entrants. Oh, nice. 110 to be exact. So a very strong showing, especially on the heels of Combo Breaker, which definitely had a very high number as well. Probably the biggest units tournament of the year so far. We saw over there and we saw, we see the winner of that, Clem, came all the way down here to CEO as well, trying to continue on his pressure. Not up here, but you know, you'll see him throughout the day later on. Specifically in Pool G1, we're gonna see players like JDR, yes. sponsored by Kick Punch Block. You also have Surf, who got ninth at Combo Breaker. And you'll have some other really cool players. And on the other side of G1, there's G1, there's G2. In G2, you're gonna have Cookie, yeah. very strong Florida player as well as School Bus hailing from New York. Okay. So we're gonna have very talented people coming through the entire day through. We're gonna see who can kind of solidify their place to top eight. Yeah, a lot of guys making the way down here to Florida for this uh, this tournament here. It's really good to see all these players coming from all over. Okay, we've got a few Japanese players snuck in there too, right? I'm not 100% sure. I saw through the bracket. I don't uh -huh. know if there were late entrants or not. Okay, yeah, because I heard rumor yesterday. I didn't remember recognizing any of the names, but. Yeah, Clem coming all the way down from Canada. That'll be exciting yeah. to see. I mean, he's been such on a tear after a, a big win at Combo Breaker, yeah. taking first place. He wants to keep up that momentum, and looks like we're going to have more Wagner right. as they have Wagner mirrors to come off. So I want to see Shield Bash round start. <laughs> right. Just clash at each other. Let's see what happens. If you okay. like Sword and Board, you're in the right spot right now. I mean, this is the right place to do it. We're at Daytona Beach, right? They got their boogie boards. Yes. So we got Totally Drew representing Tallahassee and School Bus. There we go. Um, my research showed a little bit he was a Carmine player, but looks like he's not taking any chances. No. <laughs> Going straight to Wagner. Doesn't want to spin the HP for the damage this time, huh? Nice overhead Ooh. into the shield bash here. I like it. OTG antics. Nice. He saw the power up between it, making sure to take advantage of those proper confirms. He's trying to get that optimal combo. Okay, use the X to extend the pressure here. But School Bus content to lock. Just chilling there, building up all that GERD. There you go, Morple. 
Oh, that was a cool bus save. Totally Drew had a chain shift available. Okay, I like that. Yeah. That's yeah. the biggest value of it. Yeah, get that ball right there. Well, you also have it so where you see what your opponent's doing and you ah, react accordingly. Right. The, the quick timeout when the screen flashes. Yep. Nice combo there. The school bus taking that first round and pretty good back. Yeah, like, sometimes you can't find a gap, just CS and be like, oh, there it is. Yep. Let's make a gap. Yeah. Oh, big whiff on that. And the high counter, too. We're going to see a nice. We're almost going to see a nice combo there, but wake up throw. The corner. Okay. Again with the EX, but beats out the throw. Sniffed it out and got it. Gets some great damage on there. James Warble has Marta spin for the combo. And wow, School Bus was a dominant. Two rounds to zero. So a New York came to play. Yeah. It looks like he, he does really well in his locals over there. So I feel like looking at it, he always gets like top three in the Unis tournaments they have pretty much monthly over there. So I don't I don't see him at a TSB, but I don't really see the Unis tournament when they have him there, if they have him. But he's showing like how his experience and how well he does over there is translating to here so far. It seems to be paying off for him. As once again, he's getting right into the pressure. Nice. Shield batch into the corner. Building up that grid right away here. Coming up totally Drew fighting back. Just relentless pressure in the corner here from the school bus. Oh, nice block here from Drew though. Gets some grid back. That should be almost around, but he was the DP. Right into chain shift, but it still wasn't his turn afterwards. So totally Drew removed the perfect here. Now has a chance to continue Start on. For a short sword, it has so much range. Yeah, it really <laughs> does. All things considered. <laughs> but when she starts charging that thing up and it's glowing, it gets even more scary. Oh, another nice shield bash there. You really got to pay attention to that and just scout it out at any time. You try to press forward, you get hit by that. It just kind of takes the wind out of your sails. Yeah, now School Bus finding the gaps in the offense there and taking his turn. Wow, look at that corner carry. Around the world. Nice. Gets to hit right into power up. It, he has 200 bar and chain shift available. We might see a hit into Vorpal. We might see that going all the way into it. He just chain shift there. Catches a low. 200 bar goes to Simple and clean. As Skobos wins it. 2 0 over Totally Drew. Wow, yeah. It's two really quick dominating performances so far in these matches. And that's the part like, we kind of like, kind of looking at uh, you know, school bus at a really good spot in the bracket here. So one of the players I'm looking forward to seeing how well he does and how far he can make it, especially against the ranks of players like Clem and and you know others who will be really you know showing off. So I mean, it's, it's interested to see as I like, kind of everyone still kind of waking up. I mean, showing such strong play early yeah. on, like out the gate. Oh, and he goes down there. <laughs> And he goes to his girl in the front of the crowd like, yeah, I did that. Did you see that, babe? Oh, man, you proud of me? There you go. That's that power up, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we see you. That was a pretty he, he's, he's flushing. too, school bus. He was definitely taking somebody to school right there. That's I right. Few <laughs> definitely watching it, you know? <laughs> Got to drop the kids off real quick. Go say hey to my lady. <laughs> Here we are. Yeah, that's a quick. That's, that's the kind of bus driver I'm looking forward to. That's the one that's just, like, efficient clean gets the job done real quick so that's what's up we're here get off my bus <laughs> sit down oh man so like i said there's so much action going through today and this being ceo this is the big day so yesterday kind of ended early with that new, the new japan world wrestling yeah so we had that happen early on so you see a lot of the shirts you know all the kenny omegas everything and this man masked up it's, it is kind of chilly in here, to be honest, so. Yeah, I walked out to the car uh, after my box yesterday afternoon and doing commentary, and I was coming back in, and there was a clip of Bullet Club shirts just like, <laughs> and I was like, oh, is the event starting already? And it was like, people got here really early for that, man. It was super hype. Oh, no, yeah, that was the big part of last evening. Even, like, the, the CEO, CEO's own Jabali getting in the ring for spring for some action, even with the busted leg. Right? So they, that, I'm glad that was a big success, because that was something that, they cooked up and they he dreamed up yeah. to make happen and just to see that culminate last night and it to be received so well i'm really happy but now all we're gonna have is unabashed fighting games yes. throughout the whole entire day as pretty much every game in it that's here is gonna be played out in some capacity 
Only one game's finished, and that was KOF 14. Yes. Which was last night on this very same channel. The top eight last night happened right here. There was some really cool, uh, cool competition in that, man. Like, like every game. Big Killers came out. I mean, this is a tournament with floor space bigger than almost any other major. Yeah. You know, Sans, there's only one that's kind of bigger in, in, in real estate. But also just like the sheer amount of players who came through from all over the world. Right. From Europe, from Asia, you know, some South America, Canada. It's great to yeah. see that all the way down to this small, you know, Daytona Beach. Daytona is smaller than Orlando, you know? Mm -hmm. So all coming down to the beach and hanging out. All right, we got a Wagnerless fight. Coming right. up with Eltonum, Wall Scene. We got our players. Yeah, speaking of full clips. He Elton. who films the cloud versus Drake, Waldstein, Steam, whatever you want to call this. This monster with hands larger than the actual character Elmo, but how will he approach? That's going to be the hard part right here, as we're going to see. Try to use some assault to close in space there. Just yes. reach out and touch someone with those extra long arms. Think about what a half the screen there. I mean, she's got a range on her own. She has her... She has her line. She can pull out the zip line. She has a gun. Oh, nice wow. Air throw. And get the extension here as he films the cloud. Cross under. Kick. Nice meaty there. Impressive use of Elton there. Very nice. Get, get going. That's going to be the big part. Just because Elton wants to get in. Once she does that, she can set up something really good pressure. She's kind of using the bullets. Just keeping Drake out in the distance and give her a chance to reload. Yep, yep, watch your ankle up bullets in the clip there too. Okay, there we go. Assault into the sea. Using that EX to extend it. Oh, the mix up. Oh, but darn. Didn't finish the combo. We got. And now getting dunked. Big damage on that super. There you go. That's the exact trademark zoning in the confirm. Doing a really good job of keeping you, or uh, rather Drake out of reach there. Doesn't want to get grabbed like he did before and slammed all around. Yeah, he took oh. a big risk with that. The jump uh, jump down C. Very punishable on block, but you don't have chain shit, so you're going to see that round ender. Just going ham right now. He who films the clouds. Double triple. I'm just like, bro, you, you really thought you could sneak one past me. As he who films the cloud takes the first game. Drake pausing to think, considering the options here. Yeah. Sticking with Wallstein, he had some good hits here and there, but he couldn't continue it. So he wasn't really completing the combos, nor was he setting up any kind of like reset pressure for either command throw or just, you know, he's got some really solid pressure overall once he gets going, but you really have to pick and choose your spots of how you approach Elmo. Definitely having a hard time there, closing up space and approaching. Yeah. Team playing more on the ground, not really trying to go into the air where looks like he who films the clouds is really just waiting to scope it out, but nice. Watch the overhead. Gets shot for his troubles though. Woo! There we go. But he gets hit. That was a big take too. Just threw out like the forward C and went for that wall grab and get some damage, but now here's the hard part. How can he escape the corner here as he from the cloud has all this pressure going on? Opened up by the overhead there. Yep. So he who films the cloud starting off much similar to the last match. Ooh, nice confirm. Oh. One shot into super. Gonna pull forward. Shoots the ankles. Gets a corner carry. Nice extension here, but challenges. Oh. No involvement on that. As he who films the cloud says, no, bro. Calm down with that wake up. But now a reversal of fortune here. A big chance for Drake here if he can move back in and continue the pressure, but shot after shot after shot. Oh, just shooting away. Chipping away too. I mean, he doesn't it do any kind of damage yet, yeah. but it's just mental damage. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, it's a little bit disheartening, especially when Drake has been trying so hard to get in there and close in and get some of the pressure. Just can't get his hands on he who films the cloud, but he who films the cloud putting hands on Drake right now. Oh my god. Fuzzy trying to do a little cute stuff here. As Drake gets more hits, but run up throw after the chain shift. The assault fell just short of where he wanted it to be right there. I guess Heartbreaker. It, yeah. It's always rough, your first match going that way, because you know you had the hits here and there, but you couldn't capitalize enough off of them. And then you, you, it ends up with he who films the clouds having all that distance to be able to play his game. So you need to, really, you need to like 
to make the round starts matter more mm -hmm. and make the at least get some knockdowns. I wonder how much of what we're seeing so far is just a matter of, you know, maybe guys didn't get the chance to warm up and are coming in cold in some of these matchups in here. I know. And then of course like some stage jitters as well. Yeah. When you when you think about it because yeah, this absolutely. is playing on main stage early. I mean it's a it's a setup like any other. And at least there's not a really a, a crowd there because it's so early to really kind of you know put that extra pressure on the back of your neck. That's how that's what it is. Yeah. And most of the early crowd here are people just scrambling to make it to their morning pools. That's right. And here like we mentioned before, pool this is pool G1. This is JDR. Referring kick punch block. So JDR has traveled a lot this year for Unist. I like that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> like as you were saying it, I was scoping out the cinder block and I couldn't help but yep. chuckle in the last like actual <laughs> block. <laughs> so and this is, I believe, Jar of Dog representing Team Yace. Okay. So, you know, Team Yace really loves this game. And okay, it looks like JDR is buying his color, making sure he reps the reps what he knows best. And what he has. And Drop Dog, the Yace boys love Unist. Yeah. A lot of them, we have like Shaquille Uniel, who's <laughs> one of the best names in fighting games that is 100%. Amazing. I love it. And like Lumen Abyss, a lot of those guys who really rep the Yace brand and really love Unist, representing it wherever they go. So this is a big thing because JDR is going to be a big opponent to have to face. Getting ninth at Combo Breaker, third at Frosty Faustings, and third at Texas Showdown. Ooh. He has traveled probably more though, more so than any other Unis player in North America. Putting in the work. Yep. And his results show. Hyde player, very strong and good placing, so he's one of the guys to beat. And expecting a good showing here from him in this tournament. But let's see if Jar Dog can make, make the magic happen with his Biakia. We'll see, gonna be definitely laying some traps out here. JDR right. gonna be wise to it. We'll see. That Could you look determined. about this game, how you can pause it before the game actually starts? Yeah. That's Check your stuff, and then you still have your match. Little things like that are so nice. It gets out of the way of itself. Well, get out of the way of JDR. He's a strong start. Already in the corner, applying the extra pressure here. It's really Shot solid. Away. Oh. Yeah, try to get caught him. Trying to up back here. Keeping the pressure going. Yeah, that should be the round. He's Taking like nothing but a little bar. bit of chip damage in the process. Chain shift and close it out. Why not? Wow. Telling Jarb Dog, yo, what's up? Yeah. Good morning. <laughs> what happened to How the kids doing know right you? <laughs> you, can't, you, don't, you don't have to deal with traps if none get set. Exactly. All right, there's, oh. speaking of traps, finds a hit here but couldn't get the confirmation. Like washing your car to make it rain. You mentioned the traps and there's a web. But unfortunately, Set himself up in the corner and got punished for it. Jar Dog. High corner A little bit of life. Okay. Ah, oh, gets hit. Counter hit. That's the one thing. It's like Jar Dog's gotta be more careful. He's putting himself in the corner a lot. Yes. Un even if it's unintentional. And it's not working out is JDR is finding these hits here. It's gonna have enough to close it out. Just a relentless assault from JDR. So something Jar Dog's gotta take a little second to think about. Because if, if he's letting JDR get the space he wants and letting him play that in-game, he's c confirming all those hits out there. You know, Bjelka has a little bit, you know, decent range. Especially with, like, you know, some really good lows. He has to, like, control that distance and keep JDR from getting those clean hits. I know, JDR just keeps putting them in timeout. He's like, you go sit in the corner and I'm going to swing my sword around at you as much as I can. Oh. Jar Dog trying to keep him trapped there with a web right in his face in the corner though. Now it's there we Jar Dog's go. time to try to get some corner pressure. pressure of his own mounted up there. I, li I like the reverse beat pressure he had going on, but again he gets himself in the corner here. And this is where JDR shines so far as he catches the low. Be a good grip of damage too, we can set up a media afterwards. So there situational is. awareness and subtle movement from JDR to just keep putting Jar Dog back in the corner. Ugh. Cut right through him. Shade the Samurai Showdown. <laughs> Cut the kid in half. Okay, there's the EX Orbital. But nice. Presses. Finally gets a hit here. Let's see if he can continue the sequence, but... Tech DP. JDR with no respect here, just saying, this is my game to play. He's out for blood. Uh-oh. Well, blocking. Gets a lot of shield in there. And now has and Vorpal. Yep. Has Vorpal. Got a punish here. He's looking pretty. really nice. How's he gonna set up the BD when he has the chain shift? Brutal Overhead! Watch oh. your dome and that should be it. 
Wow. Quick 2-0 is JDR. Slices Charm Dog and knocks the hat right off of him. And that's like I said, this that's the talent and the experience that JDR has from having gotten so many top eights and good placings and just the travels really shows how well how much he wants to win a big Eunice tournament. Well, we'll see what his chances are going to be like here. He's moving on in the winner's bracket. Going to try to keep that momentum going here for the rest of the tournament as he starts to clear the stage for the next fighters to make their way up here. Yeah, he just, he got right in Jarv Dog's face. It yeah. did not stop. It's like, like the pit bull was off the chain right there and just keeping you backed up. He picked the gaps. That was the big thing. Like, Jarv Dog let some spacing out. He didn't finish his combos and set up the, the meaty traps and the mix-up, so that's what really hurt. Because you, once JDR had an opportunity to really just approach from like any angle, JDR controlled the entire pace of it, and that's something that, you, as a Biakia, he wants to. That that's his job. Right. His job is to force hide a character who does have a fireball and has like you know decent normals to have to really try to maneuver through and make it more complicated for that. So that's something that you know didn't quite work out for him. But you know, food for thought as he goes into his next match in the losers bracket. Absolutely, yeah. He, we saw him set up the webs a few times and really not able to get anything to, to shake yeah. down out of that, so. And it's just how it is, you know, so. You gotta be on point. A game like this, you know, any any kind of mistake can mean a lot because momentum changes, shifts mm -hmm. so easily. Yeah, absolutely. There's that tug of war going on the yeah. whole time. It's not just in the game, but like in the system. So yeah. it's like, it's built in. Tug of war is literally the MO of the game. It's like, it's really a beautiful mechanic. Yeah, it's 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 balanced so well. It's, it's rare to see. It's not. I wouldn't say rare to see, but it's. I appreciate games that systems are built so fluently throughout the game itself. So you see it as an extension of the players. How they it allows them to express themselves. Right. More so than their char like through their characters, but through the system, and that's really unique because not a lot of games let you have that capability where a lot of it's like the characters is the sole representation of the player here, like BB Tag itself. Mm -hmm. The way you use the system, the way you play with it, really shows how your approach is in the game. It's really cool. Yeah, styles make fights, as they say. That's right. And you definitely see different styles. Sometimes when, when you have a mechanic like that in games, it could be a gimmick or whatever, but just that underlying grid, just the different ways that you can take advantage of it and the options that it allows you is really cool to see. It really allows for some really neat action. Yeah, like the mechanic, the mechanic of shield, where you get your grid meter faster, you have the ability to make strings a little less safe, or make jump-ins, you know, negative, right? Right. But at the same time, grid can get broken if you get shield wrong, if you get thrown out of shield. So it's another game of like picking your spots correctly because you can't just coast on it. It's not just the end-all, be-all to do. So there's always a risk, even on defense, which I, you know, it's really something unique. So as they get their button set up, it looks like we are facing down another Wagner mirror match. Which we'll see, like I said, we'll see a lot of it. Such a popular character, the new character in Eunice. So good. Alongside Enkidu, who, uh, you know, we haven't seen much of, we're probably not, not very popular from my understanding. Yeah, and the, the way I have been told is it's just like a, a, a little bit tougher to work with his tools than some of the other fighters here. I definitely love that character design, though. Another str strong player based out of Florida is on deck here, Sir, oh, as okay. you saw on there. I mean, aptly named here in Daytona, going by Sir. Right. Ninth, another ninth placer. So like JDR, he also got ninth place at Combo Breaker. You know, Florida has a pretty decent scene for Eunice, but I think a lot of the players are, are spread out yeah. all over the place. Because uh, People I, underestimate the size of Florida. Yeah, exactly. And somebody decided it would be a good idea to have urban sprawl throughout most of Florida, so you have to drive everywhere. What me? Oh, never mind. Not no one invited Wagner me mirrors. to those planning meetings. Okay, so not a Wagner mirror match. We're going to see another Wagner versus uh, Aurier. Yeah. Oh. Like from my from what I looked at, he's normally a Wagner player, but he might not want to do it in the mirror. Maybe so. So he yeah. might have went back to his original character to face this, and oh, nice counter hit into chain shift. Get him, Persona. And Hootie Tang, Florida. So it's the Florida boys match. Sada Tang. <laughs> so which one of these are your boys? I mean, what scene are you out of? Uh, I'm from Central Florida, so okay. I see thought, it all right. Uh, yeah, I know. Cookie is in the brackets, uh, Argon Ross as well, he's in the next pool, I think in pool H. 
but uh, these fellas, I don't know. Okay, you okay. see them in my neck of woods. In, in Central Florida, we don't have a lot of units tournaments. Um, oh, no, Jacksonville, okay. they do it, and other places as well. Okay. But I've been lobbying hard. Nice free pressure. There's the overhead. Catches Booty Tank. Not waiting for it. Oh, try to repressure. I like that. Reset into the into the down down B. Trade off. Working out Laurier's favor though, and Surf taking the round. Very clean, very clean. I mean, it good back and forth between the two. Oh, run up low. Gets the high counter. It's going to be some good damage in corner carry. At least to start it off. And a lot of grit. Using the shield. Got to watch out here. Surf with the patience. Almost had some good blocks there, but oh, manages to attack and get a hit. Oh, looks the persona, but then closes in anyway. Oh, nice confirm off of that. Big, big jump in. Ooh, ooh, that's the reset, that's game. Oh, really good meaty there, but nice grab. And there's the veil off. Let's get off me. We finally see someone burst, essentially. And it, it connected to, so. Like most burst elder fighting games, it is punishable and block. So it can be a risk, but now he has act he has EXS. He has everything active. So if he gets a hit, he can make some big damage happen, but Hootie Tank fighting through it really well. Ooh, who are you saying? Because I got to say the name, no, my brother. <laughs> so wake up DP into EX, catches it, take round, evens it up. One round apiece. So now we got a battle on our hands. Surf taking it to the corner here, making use of the persona. DP from Pootie Tank to try to reverse the action. Nice throw break. Charging up here. Standing the pressure is Booty Tang, but still staying in the corner here. Finding comfort, I guess. Now, one thing I have actually discovered recently, I'm still just discovering so many new things about this game, especially doing a lot of research, getting ready for this tournament, but I didn't realize that you build grid more the further you are from your starting position. Like, if you push them to the other corner, I was being told yesterday that your grid actually builds a little bit faster. I can understand that, because yeah. again, it's a game like Tug of War. Right. It's kind of like the mechanic built into that, like if your opponent is at full screen and you have that prime positioning, if you have center stage, you're you're showing that you're taking the initiative, mm -hmm. so you get advantage of that, which is kind of like, it looks like, you know, sewn into the fabric of the game. So again, it's just the thoughtfulness shows of how the developers put implemented stuff like that into there. And they really did a good job of identifying effective aggression here and rewarding yeah. it with the grid system. So Surf taking that first uh, first match up there. Now Booty Tang. Closing it with some corner pressure here. So yeah, lots of hit on Surf's side. He's going to go Vorpal here. Nice counter. Confirm into much damage though. Only 2k on that one. Trying to open up with the overhead. Good defense from Booty Tang, but now opened up. Block string, good shielding there by Surf. CS by Booty Tang now, just gonna try to get some bar, I think, out of the situation. Knew that Vorpal wasn't gonna come his way with all the grid that Surf has built up there. Yeah, so far doing really strong. I mean, both players very even off of there, but again, Surf just get, finding more hits, obviously, getting advantage of it, setting up a nice BD. Oh, but there's a tech throw. The beauty of that, too, is wow, dove right into it, but didn't end it in great back dash. Makes it safe, and oh! Nice shield bash, keeping Booty Tang alive here in this round. Oh, but there's the punish on that. Unfortunately, the combo drop, and Ori with enough range to get the punish pretty clean. And now Surf on match point. Block strings in here from Surf, defense from Booty Tang. Trying to close in, but gets caught coming in by Surf. Nice anti-air to confirm. It's a quick 2K out of that. Okay, nice. Catches into pressure. Nice throw again. Hoodie Tank's throw on you know, throw hit percentage is very high right now. Whereas Serbs, unfortunately, he's not connected to really any throws. And it's also a game where, again, if you tech a throw, it's whoever techs it is at advantage there. So you have to really respect it. Spins the bar and gets a tidy amount of damage right there, does Surf. Went for nice the bail off combo. extension, but yeah. unfortunately dropped the no. hits that could have ended it, but still in a prime position to take the match. Booty Tang finding himself in dire straits right now, uses the chain shift going on. He's got two bars to use. Can he pull something out here against Surf? Surf wisely using some distance here. Time is on his side. Yeah. Oh, and there it is. Just 
way stand <laughs> right through him. And Pierced his heart boop. and all his winner's bracket hopes. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> I, I, like, I appreciate that option, though, because they both kind of, like, waited each other and stared yeah. at that last second, and it was just, like, the A version, just light. <laughs> <laughs> the God, last thing you'd expect. You wouldn't like me when I'm stabby. <laughs> <laughs> so good, 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 good stuff. Great matches so far to start the day. A lot of solid play, and, like like I said, Surf, the p one of the players in G1, alongside JDR, so he might see them face each other soon to see who can qualify for top eight in the winner's side of that bracket. That's going to be an excellent match because, again, two players who got ninth at combo breaker facing each other and seeing who's hungrier. Yeah. Who wants it more? So, again, I want to thank all you guys who are tuning in with us right here at CEO 2018 in beautiful Daytona. I know it's early, but appreciate all you all watching here. Make sure you give a nice follow to the Villain904 channel. Streaming all day yesterday, all day today. And it'll be Unist all day on here, and you also have some awesome stuff you'll see through Comba. You can use the code CEOCOMBA2018, get 10% off site-wide. Get yourself a new fight stick, a new stick bag, anything on there valid through the 8th of July. So you have plenty of time to use that coupon code. Yeah, absolutely. They're hooking it up there. And that Obsidian, man, I've seen a lot of those here at the event. And there's a reason for it. Yep. You can see a lot of them as well at CEO Taku coming up in September in Orlando, Florida, the sister tournament to CEO anime centric. So games like Unist, yep. you know, Guilty Gear, you're going to have Multi Blood. Everything that doesn't get the representation that you see at normal tournaments is on show and on a pedestal. Make sure you register for it now. One of the finest tournaments in Florida as well, repping all the fun games from Arxis and other co companies. And also, we have the CEO Fighting Game Championships 2018 Tournament Edition here from Controller Chaos. You can see these wonderful controllers in the background here. And if you're going to buy those controllers, you can use this 10% off coupon code CEO2018 to get your hands on them. Those are just some lovely looking sticks. Elevate yep. your game. You also have the code JABATED for the DX Racer website. Get yourself a nice new chair, a really comfy with ergonomics built in to maximize and help elongate how long you can play at home practicing and training because the most important part of any fighting game is the player and you have to take care of yourselves 100 percent so here's a familiar face for me that is cookie sitting on the one piece side central florida local all right and cookie looking to make a splash here he'll be commentating later in the next block of pools too so I look forward to seeing him on the mics as well I mean, it does, it does well too. I think it, you know, strong Elton player. Uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, he helps assist in a lot of the tournaments as well yes. around here. So he is, you know, a bit of an organizer himself. Yeah, good in the like that guy. And he's really active on the Discord for Undernight as well. Yeah. So you kind of see a lot of the love translating everywhere, not just in the way how he plays, but in competing, organizing. So really, that shows his passion for the community and Absolutely. the game itself. And make his play shows well, 25th at Combo Breaker. So he had a good rank up there, and we can see if he can't, you know, elevate that and see how well he does here. All right, his opponent, Gordo. So no cookie going with phone on. All right. And that's great. I'm, I'm loving the character variety. I know we've yeah. seen a lot of Wagner, but we are seeing a lot of the other characters. Phone on, very strong. Yes. Very good range, good fireballs. Yeah, that 2C. Amazing pressure. And Gordo. I mean, that that was like, even since Undernight's inception, he's been like the poster boy yes. of the game. And now with uh, BB Tag 2, a lot more people have become familiar with Gordo. So D-Gen Enigma is Cookie's opponent here. Do I have the names wrong, or is it is it, is it Cookie playing Gordo? Yeah, Cookie's on, uh, I'm pretty sure Cookie's on one piece side. You okay, okay. Correct. So my bad. Enigma so so my up there. But now he has to deal with D-Gen's pressure. There's a knockdown. He's gonna set up here as Cookie's in the corner, but Texas throw again. Run up command grab. I like it. Trying to reassert his pressure here. Has a lot of grid to play with. Activates it. Grim Reaper EX and the whiff punish. Wow, yeah. Enigma. Ready for a good spatial awareness. Yeah. Just being just outside of that Grim Reaper. Your Shinigami does not scare me. Okay. Like the fireball overhead. Watch your dome. And a clean round from Enigma. 
put the pressure on. I can't look at that. Just great round starters. And just all the X's are so worthwhile to use just to keep that pressure going and keep you on your toes. So Cookie on his heels a bit here, but he's got a lot of bar to work with. Let's see what he does when he gets back up. It's just how do you move forward? Enigma controlling all that space and another clean confirm. Oh, that's 2C, man. One of the infamous moves that Phone on uses. I'm just going to whip your ankles from across the stage here. Okay, so that's a meaty fireball. How do you shield? And then there's the EX command grab. Nicely done. Gets himself out of that corner pressure. Now just Cookie trying to mount some of his own. But that's the problem. He backed up. He let space out and put Enigma at a good range, but finds a hit. There we go. There we go. Nice combo there in the corner by Cookie now. Well done. Set up a meaty. Good change. Oh, but went for the assault. Didn't press anything. And Enigma just pressing in between, catching the low. First game going to Enigma. That was huge. That was a like at least we saw when Cookie finally found a hit. He had the he had enough composure to complete his combo. He just unfortunately made some mistakes on his mini pressure. Yes, and he gave up his turn, which which hurt just a quite a, hurt a little bit. Absolutely, yeah. If he could just step up that Oki game a little bit, and we saw when he gets his opportunities, he can make the most of them. So he just needs to try to create some more of those opportunities here. As right now, he's trying to withstand this pressure from Enigma. Okay, there you see, you see his force function, finding some use out of it, and then trying to control the air since Enigma is finding himself you know, in the air a little bit. Okay, Grim Reaper assault. Oh, counter hit C. Let's go. Nicely done. Scoops with the low. Oh, my slide through. Hefty 3,300 damage, not too shabby there. All right, we'll try to get a reverse beat, but Enigma seeing through it and the, nice, the, the turnaround. Combo airborne cross up. <laughs> yeah, very smart. You see, Enigma just with all the awareness, and you see how strong he is. Oh, that was that was nasty. Now taking the life lead with the corner pressure. Got some bars. He's gonna spend it. Yes, he does. Wants that knockdown. Set up the median. There's the throw. That's gonna be it. Snaps the Reaper's neck in half as Enigma is now on match point. We're seeing a bit more cookie there in that last round, though. Yeah, we saw a little wake up, but the problem is just like you see Enigma converting off every little thing and just the, the lag on a lot of Gorgo's normals that have the range that we'll be able to at least contest. Okay, there it is, EX Grim Reaper. Nice use of the CS there to get that opening. Another big hit. Oh, makes the drop in between. So far, something we haven't seen yet from Enigma, but great blocks. Good defense, nice shield, gets the purple. Did find a way in, though. Okay, there's the fireball. It's been the story of the match so far. Nice purple again. It's unfortunate, though, the force function, he doesn't really get anything off counter hit from that distance. Yeah. So even though it's hitting, he doesn't really set up anything, and now it's looking like to be hit. So oh. The bar closes it out. Nice performance there by Enigma. Taking it two games to zero, as sends Cookie straight to losers. But Enigma looking really, really crisp. Yeah. Everything working out really well. The mix-ups were strong. The conversions were crispy. Yeah, very sharp photon play right there. Yeah. It's really converting off a lot of things, getting a lot of work in, in those combos. Oh, man. Cookie venting his frustration yeah. a little bit there. The stage jump kind of showed all of that emotion yeah. right there. And you got to be careful when you jump off of there because one, one false move and the cookie could crumble. <laughs> Indeed. But yeah, like I, I promised you energy. The guy's got it in spades. That's right. Even though early on, but I mean, you're from Florida, so at least you're you're not you don't feel as bad waking up at 10 a.m. Where being from Houston, is it not easier? You got that? What are you guys? Two I, hours I, back? I, or? I, it, I normally wake up at me myself at Central Time. I wake up at 11 normally. Okay. So I, I got some sleep at least last night, which was nice. I like to Just I like to sleep on Saturdays myself. So yeah. I'm usually sleeping in, my alarms going on. I was like, "What is this? Is this broken? This isn't my bed." It's one of those <laughs> things too. Like, it's it's also nice waking up to, like, the view is so nice. We're here at the the right across the street is the Hilton Resort. Mm -hmm. So we get to like wake up to a, a sunrise on the beach, just seeing the sun glisten off the ocean. That's something you can't if you've never experienced. It's it's a, a special kind of morning. It is like one of the best things to wake up to absolutely yeah. and there's still a lot of people out there who've never seen the ocean so it's one of those things it's like it's cool that event like ceo has moved more towards you know daytona mm -hmm. so people can experience that when you get the salt all right when you get the salt in from losing you can go enjoy the salt of the beach yes take a salt bath 
All right. just, that way your salt is minuscule in comparison. And all y'all are going to take a quick ad bath as we're going to go to a quick break here. So please stay tuned for more Eunice action, but we'll be right back here at CEO 2018.